The acknowledged king of the court is William Pop Gates, one of the best basketball players, black or white, of his time. He is a playmaker and high point man, a terror on offense, deadly on defense. His slick city style of play commands the attention of the Renaissance, and he becomes a highly prized addition to the Big Five lineup. Gates brings star quality of another magnitude to the ruling Renaissance. We started in 1922, now this is 1938, and uh, he said we traveled throughout the country, uh, we admired and respected by all black or whites, and we want you to carry yourself as a gentleman at all times. So they offered me a contract, a big contract, by salary was started, it was $125 a month. We had a very easy schedule, I would say. We started off at, uh, say, around about a week before Thanksgiving, then we would hit the road up until uh, Christmas time. Then we'd be on the road all that time, we'd come back to play Christmas. This was yearly. This was uh, something that we did because of people in Harlem wanted to see us. Then after Christmas, we hit the road again, and we'll get back here again until maybe three and a half or four months later. During that particular time, we had probably played up to 150 ball games, playing every day in the week. Eating out of the grocery store, that means we'd eat out of the bus, you had to go to the grocery store to buy your food because certain areas where you were not allowed to eat in restaurants. Out in the Midwest, or certain parts of Ohio, uh, Indiana, Illinois, the southern parts, you could not eat there, yet we were allowed to play there. Uh, we traveled anywhere from uh, 300 to 400 miles per day getting to the ball game. In order to find a place to sleep, we had probably traveled another 100 miles or so to find somewhere to sleep at. When the National Basketball Association is formed in 1947, black teams are excluded, and competition between black and white ball clubs comes to a close. Pop Gates joined the Harlem Globetrotters, last of the all-black teams, in 1950. To survive, the one-time rulers of the court become the court jesters of basketball. As clowns, their popularity is such that the teams of the fledgling NBA depend on double headers with them to draw the crowds. I played there with the team for two years as a player, and then I played and coached for the Harlem Globetrotters from 19. 53, 54, and 55. At the beginning of the Globe Charters, they were just as good a ball club as any other team that was participating at that particular time. They weren't playing a team that were laid down to them. They were playing teams that was trying to beat them, so they had to be able to play. Integration comes to professional basketball, but the change comes too late for this black champion ever to play in the NBA.